Steve McQueen. He was the ultimate bad boy of the silver screen. A rebel without any rule. Who even today still stacks up as the king of cool. The product of a one night stand. Between a game girl and a stunt pilot stagehand. The age of three. His parents were absentee. They'd left him with an uncle down in Slater, Missouri. Come year six, his mother pulled him back out of the sticks and introduced him to her late night red light tricks. There, he was used and abused. And by nine, he was back on the streets, living a life of crime. Thirteen, he popped his cherry to a Hershey bar hooker. Later on, he said she was a big girl and not much of a looker. His mother sent him back to the Huckleberry Hicks for Uncle Claude yet again to try and fix. But he was fourteen, a little mean. He blew the farmyard scene and worked his way back on a travelling circus to the big city dream. A juvenile judge gave him a couple of years' hard time. There the Borstal boys berated and beat him until he walked their line. Savvy and sage at sixteen, he moved across to New York City, then joined the Navy, jumped ship to become a brothel boy where the girls were pretty. Totally savage by seventeen, his mother signed him across to Uncle Sam in order for the military to make it man and marine. He went AWOL from their gig, and the shore patrol picked him up and gave him forty-one days in the brig. On saving the lives of his fellow crew, they promoted him to presidential guard dressed him up in midnight blue. Demoted and demobbed, he became a drifter and served thirty days on a southern chain gang for being a vagrant grifter. Back in jungle land, he began to pimp pros and sell second-hand guns. He rubbed holsters with hoodlums and Harlem drug runs. Then, in 1953, on the advice of a pro called Lindsay, he began acting the method, courtesy of G.I. Bill and ABC. He moved over to Echo Park and began busting all the bit parts until Hollywood made him in to a mark. Not bad. For a carnival bark who once sold pens and stole hubcaps after dark. His first marriage, well, that went to hell when he found out his wife had been sleeping with Maximilian Shell. The second, he spent it smoking blow or ghost dancing on peyote powder that he'd bought from the Navajo. He fed his fearsome libido at the Whiskey A Go Go, and once wrapped up a movie by spending Good Friday in a Mexican bordello. McQueen, where well, he raced and rallied everything from sprites to 708 spiders. Later, he began to barnstorm biplanes and seaplane gliders. He wasn't interested in second place. If he couldn't have pole position, then he wouldn't even enter the race. Charlie Manson almost sealed his fate when he murdered three friends, one being a girl called Sharon Tate. After that, he never went anywhere without carrying his Magnum 38. The legendary fighter Bruce Lee said he was the toughest son of a gun and always called him baby. Yeah, McQueen. Well, he had a firework fuse. He 
once threatened to bust the nose of the billionaire Howard Hughes. President Nixon put him on a watch list. But then again, that Quaker man was not too keen on anyone with a counterculture twist. All the directors, lovers and wives, well, they fell hopelessly in love with that vulnerability and violence behind his eyes. He had what the movie men call the X Factor. It was less a way of acting, more of a red-blooded reactor. His third wife, well, she's still totally smitten. She cries when she recounts how for every bust up he used to buy her a brand new baby kitten she laughs at how he'd blow drive his hair to the Bee Gees and snuddle up and watch the love boat the takeaway Chinese she was there at his last stand when Billy Graham blessed him and put a bible in his hand she still carries that flame for her famous firebrand. She says when she gets her wings, she's going to meet him and fly away in that forever, never, never land.